back at the Kennedy Space Center where all things are proceeding smoothly toward a 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time launch of the Columbia Space Shuttle. And in place and on board are astronauts John Young and Robert Crippen. They have a combined total, by the way, of 31 years as astronauts. They began their careers, each of them as Navy pilots, and each has logged thousands of hours of flying time, including some hours here in the past 48 hours between uh, the delayed launch of Friday and today's scheduled launch. There is one big difference between the two of them, of course. Crippen has not been in space before. Young, a veteran, has been up there four times before. So even though Crippen is only seven years younger than John Young, he's a kind of space rookie, the kid on this flight, and Young is the wily old veteran. And that can lead to some funny moments between the two of them, as Heidi Schulman found out when she prepared this profile of astronaut Young and Crippen. Hey, John, after this flight, are you going to give up and stop flying? You gonna leave it for those younger folk? Space flight is an old man. <laughs> At 50, John Young is certainly not an old man, yet the fact that he jokes about his age and its possible effect on his profession tells you something about him. He doesn't seem to worry about matters he can't control. Someone once said of Young that he's an amusing bundle of contradictions, a man both witty and aloof, a man who likes adventure but dislikes the outdoors. He is totally dedicated, but on the flight of Gemini 3, Young took a corned beef sandwich from his pocket and offered a bite to his startled commander, the late Virgil Grissom. Gemini 3 in 1965 was Young's first space flight. Since then, he has been to the moon and back, and in his 19 years as an astronaut, he has left a profound personal mark on this country's space program. In 1966, Young commanded Gemini 10 with Michael Collins. That mission advanced the techniques of space flight by docking with an unmanned Agena rocket. Just about everyone remembers Apollo 11, the flight that put Neil Armstrong and Edwin Aldrin on the moon. Apollo 10 with young Thomas Stafford and Eugene Cernan had been the final rehearsal. On that flight, the lunar module came within 9.5 miles of the moon's surface, so near and yet so far. Young finally made it to the moon in April of 1972, the flight of Apollo 16. Riding his so-called moon buggy on the lunar surface, Young radioed back to the Space Center in Houston. We've just set a new world speed record, 17 kilometers an hour on the moon. He spent 20 hours exploring the moon's surface. Young and Robert Crippen have been training for their space shuttle flight for more than two years. Crippen is 43. He has been an astronaut since 1969. This will be his first space flight, but during his 12 years in the program, Crippen has, as the saying goes, paid his dues. He was part of the crew in a 56-day Skylab medical experiments altitude test, a simulation of future Skylab missions. Later, Crippen was a member of the support team for three Skylab flights, plus the Apollo-Soyuz mission in 1975. Their training for the space shuttle flight has involved 25 hours of formal instruction each week, plus a total of more than 1,200 hours working in elaborate mock-ups of Columbia's flight deck. Crippen points out that some of the problems that have delayed the mission were a benefit in one sense. They gave both men more time to plan and practice for just about any contingency, for that unexpected moment when something might just go wrong. Or as Young puts it, if you're not nervous, you don't understand what's happening. Heidi Schulman, NBC News. Now you're looking at the, uh, the sh space shuttle and its solid fuel boosters and the big tank filled with liquid uh, oxygen and hydrogen, and the clock is stopped. The planned uh, hold at nine minutes away from launch uh, is in effect now. It will last about ten minutes. Let's listen to the launch control. At the present time, we know of no major problems as we enter this final ten-minute build-in hold. They will, uh, that an arm that you see there at the top, can we just see the picture back again for a second, please, Walter? That arm, uh, an arm up there that's uh, called the uh, oxygen venting arm will be withdrawn uh, during this hold. Uh, and the rest of the uh, connections that they have with the spacecraft itself will be withdrawn. They will also start the countdown clock at this point, uh, a very precise clock because some of these operations in the launching of the space shuttle are done uh, in within seconds. Uh, they, they come in a sequence that is hundreds of seconds apart. 
And the countdown clock is very important. They're doing that now. Everything seems to be going very well, Tom. Yeah, let's talk to Joe a, a few moments about what we might expect once they begin the ignition and some of the critical points that will hit during the T-9 countdown. Once the clock starts counting again, we'll be getting into new territory that we unfortunately didn't get to Friday. Uh, they've already got the nine-minute go for launch, and, and I'm sure that was a trip around the room both in the launch control center and at Houston, which is ready. At five minutes, they start the hydraulic power units. Uh, that's a very critical point because uh, uh, they're fuel critical. They're used to, to control the, uh, the engines and control services during launch and entry. Three and a half minutes, the fuel cells take the uh, full power load, and at 25 seconds before launch, the general purpose computers take over the launch, and it's automatic. We're looking at some venting right now in the external tank yeah. that is going on. Yeah, yeah. That, that tall tank in the middle of your picture there has more than half a million gallons of liquid hydrogen and oxygen in it and that's a little bit of the venting uh, that w occurs naturally that's not a difficulty that we're seeing there that's the natural venting of that it makes a little gas in the morning air the other thing i think that we ought to say joe tell our warn our viewers that we'll see ignition of the main rocket engines of the of the orbiter before we'll see the solid rocket booster go off. It's about a three second difference between three and, and a half, maybe four seconds. The clock uh, goes before count, before slightly zero past goes. zero. Those engines have to be running and verified. When the solids ignite, they recycle the clock back about a half a second to zero and off you go. Okay. And once you light the solids, you are gone. We've got a minute to talk about the rainbirds. I think that's something else that's, that's very interesting here. When this, this particular rocket ship, spaceship, is very close to the pad. The others have been quite a distance away, but this is right down there. And so when all those engines go off, it makes an enormous amount of noise. So much noise in terms of decibels that it could shake that thing to pieces. So what they are doing is they are damping that sound down with hundreds of thousands of gallons of water that are poured in there. The water it has nothing to do with the flames that you will see. It has to do with the sound that's being made so that the sound of this spaceship doesn't tear the spaceship apart when it goes off. And those, that's called rainbirds, and you may hear them mentioning rainbirds, but that's what it's called. It's an acoustic damping system. So much power involved in all of this that a lot of people have likened it to the launching of a Roman candle. You fire those solid rocket boosters and off she goes. We'll see a much faster ascent than what we've been used to in the space program before. Yes, we will. Quite a bit faster. And as John said, a lot of vibration in those first three seconds. The, if the, all the systems get through that all right, uh, they're going to go all the way. The launch director is about to speak to the crew. Okay, let's listen to the that. The launch director is uh, talking to his team about the launch commit criteria at the present time. I guess we're not going to hear that. All right, we'll be back with uh, continuing coverage of the launching of the Columbia Space Shuttle from the Kennedy Space Center right after this.